Good morning and welcome again. So today's class is about traditions in world cinema. We are basically going to talk about German expressionism and film noir. And during the course of uh, this module, we will be discussing um, other movements, film movements across the world, such as Italian neorealism, French new wave, British new wave and Iranian and Latin American cinema along with Indian parallel cinema movement. So, let us begin with expressionism and particularly German expressionism in cinema. Now, expressionism had been the dominant feature of German art since 1910 including theatre, painting and music. Because of its rejection of realistic modes of representation and its preoccupation with sexuality and emotional uncertainty, expression, uh, expressionism can be termed as a modernist movement. One of the key names associated with uh, expressionism was Max Reinhardt, who lived between 1873 to 1943 um, and he was an Austrian theatre film director who rejected the realistic stage and search for new expressive and emphatic ways of visual, scenic and musical representation which led him directly to experimentation with ways of mixing the arts. A key element in Reinhardt's work was the use of expressionistic devices. After Germany's defeat in the first world war uh, that was between 1914 and 18, the artistic form captured the mood of the generation. Germany had lost land, people and also its pride in the Treaty of Versailles. So, this setback to the collective confidence gave way to general feeling of melancholy, paranoia and morbidity. Theatre and other art forms became a vehicle to explore newer possibilities of expression of these feelings. One of the uh, earliest exponents of expressionism in cinema was Robert Wine, who made a memorable seminal film called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari in 1919. So, the impact of uh, expressionism was realized in cinematic art. Uh, Caligari is considered as one of the foremost expression of this aesthetics. Uh, it is a narrative of a mad doctor who uses a sleepwalker, a somnambulist to commit crimes for him. Wine presents his actors in exaggerated makeup and places them in distorted sets and angular architecture. The film embodies all the stylistic features of expressionism um, such as chiaroscuro that is interplay of lights and uh, shadows, oblique angles, special distortions, uh, the feeling that danger lurks in the corner and city is a threatening sight with morally ambiguous characters. It was also blamed for brainwashing the Germans, resulting in the rise of Nazism. Uh, Caligari came to be so strongly associated with expressionism that the style became popularly known as Caligarism. Other landmark expressionistic films of this period are Nosferatu, The Last Laugh and Metropolis, as well as classics such as Paul Wagner's uh, Der Golem, Fritz, da uh, uh, Fritz Lang's Dr. Mabuse, The Gambler, Paul Lenny's Waxworks and Henrik Gallin's The Student of Prague. F. W. Murnau's Faust was also an important film released in 1926. Paul Lenny's Waxworks was a portmanteau that is the story of uh, you know three parallel stories or uh, it is almost like our uh, what we today call the anthology cinema. So, it was a portmanteau about three historical figures all conceived in a writer's imagination. The architecture in Waxworks focuses on the Baghdad of the Arabian Nights and the Moscow of Ivan the Terrible. The film describes an interior world as events occur within a war, uh, sorry a wax museum. Within the palace of the Caliph of Baghdad or the small apartment of Asad the Baker and within the dungeons of the Kremlin or a wedding hall. So, all these are spaces that, uh, that uh, these morally ambiguous characters populate or inhabit. Characters are constantly bound by their surroundings and that bondage is replicated throughout the film. For example, you have the use of low ceilings 
oblique lenses, constant shadows, creating a sense that the world is closing in uh, on these characters and make their unnatural postures seem appropriate. And overall, there is a clear sense of resemblance to the style of Dr. Caligari. So, uh, the idea is that the expressionist movement is a difficult phenomenon and it is hard to mark it with any ideological concern. Its subjects range from the fantastic to the naturalistic. It opened the way for an alternative non-realistic approach to film narrative along with a few uh, along with a new stylized addition to film genre. The major reason for the end of expressionism was the end of silent films because the invention of sound paved way for naturalism and realism. The rise of Nazism in Germany in 1933 led uh, many talented filmmakers to flee the country and work in Hollywood. Directors such as Fritz Lang, Carl Freud and uh, Billy Wilder, they took expressionism to America. The result of this transcontinental exodus was a hybrid of German expressionism, French poetic realism and American pulp and it all gave birth to um, a distinct American feature such as film noir. The expressionist style of film noir creates an alienating feeling along with the realist, uh, realistic depiction. It distorts perspectives, emphasizes gestures and articulates a language for the subconscious. The directors living in self-exile in Hollywood used expressionism to express their present through their past. The brutality against Jews magnified the sense of a living nightmare for those who participated in the business of the escapist world of Hollywood. For example, we had someone like F. W. Murnau who lived between 1888 and 1931. He was considered a master expressionist along with Fritz Lang and G. W. Pabst. His films are full of dread and suggest a world between reality and fantasy. The themes of repression and sexuality recur, which echo something, uh, Murnau's, uh, something of Murnau's personal life since he was a closet homosexual during the period of Germany's homophobic laws. His films are known for creating a sense of an alternative universe. For example, one of the best horror films, Nosferatu, a symphony of terror, uh, released in 1922, is a classic example of German expressionism with Max Schreck playing Count Orlok, a Dracula-like character. Fritz Lang, the great Fritz Lang who lived between 1890 and 1976, his, his films are characterized again by feelings of psychological terror, paranoia, morbidity and a sense of dread. He was born in Austria where he made films such as Dr. Mabu's Destiny, Metropolis and M. M is a story about a child murderer and it has several visually stunning images including one of the earlier scenes where the killer uh, as played by uh, Peter Loss, his shadow looms large over a little girl. Uh, as the film comes to an end, the image of the haunted and hunted criminal stays with us. Trapped by his sense of guilt and claustrophobia, the murderer leads us into a world of dread an urban anxiety where any lapse leads to an inevitable downfall. Though he is aware of his terrible crimes, we are made to see his point of view that he cannot prevent himself from commenting those crimes. So, a psychological study of morbidity and angst. Fritz Lang's another great film is Metropolis 1927, which is recognized as the first science fiction film and it was one of the most expensive films of its times. The fairy tale plot focuses on Freder Frederson, uh, uh, the spoiled son of a rich father who is also called the master of metropolis. Um, Freder learns the oppressive living conditions of the working class and comes to understand them through a saintly young girl Maria, who also mediates in cases of disputes between the industrialists and the workers. In order to break this alliance, the master gets Maria kidnapped uh, and collaborates with a mad scientist and creates a female robot. This evil double of Maria is unleashed on the city where uh, this uh, robot tricks or farm fatal dances in a clubs and instigates a riot in the streets. 
Freder and the real Maria come together at the end and save the city from destruction initiated by the Robotrix. One lasting image in the film is uh, that of the Tower of Babel as Maria addresses the workers. Metropolis is credited for blending imageries of religion with that of a science fiction which have been referred to uh, in many later works as uh, for example, a futuristic robot, a steel handed math scientist burning at stake, workers walking into the jaw of a machine. All these are lasting images which have been replicated uh, in cinema down the period, down the ages. Now, coming to uh, the, uh, the consequence of German expressionism was uh, film noir. The literal meaning of film noir is uh, a dark film. The term was coined by French film critic, by fil uh, uh, particularly a critic called Nino Frank in 1946 to refer to a particular type of American cinema. Film noir emerged from the collision of German expressionism, horror films and poetic realism. It parallels the emergence of the city as a character. Noir films were a great influence on the French new wave cinema and later on influenced the new Hollywood films as well. So, uh, we have already talked about uh, Fritz Lang's M, one of the first noir in Hollywood is starring Peter uh, Lohr. Um, we also know that Lang was of German expressionism. Uh, uh, so, Lang has directed a series of anti-Nazi films in Hollywood, particularly Manha Manhunt, Hangman, Also Die and Ministry of Fear. He was blacklisted in Hollywood because of supposed communist collaboration. His greatest noir in Hollywood include The Big Heat, The Blue Gardenia and Human Desire. Film noir evolved in the 1940s and it became uh, prominent in the post-war era and lasted in a classic golden age period until about 1960. Classic film noir developed during and after the second world war. It took advantage of the post-war ambience of anxiety, pessimism and suspicion and possibly reflecting male fears of female liberation and independence during the war years. The Noah was characterized by a downbeat atmosphere and graphic novel, uh, sorry, graphic violence, uh, and carried post war American pessimism to the point of nihilism by assuming the absolute corruption of society. Now, there is also a literary side of Noah, and you would be surprised to know how many uh, film Noah were actually based on American pulp fiction. So, some of the uh, major novelists of uh, crime and pulp fiction in America were Dashiell Hammett, who created the character Sam Spade, which was used in the Maltese Falcon, starring uh, Humphrey Bogart. Raymond Chandler, he created the character of Philip Marlowe in The Big Sleep, The Lady in the Lake. Uh, then James Cann, who wrote The Postman Always Rings Twice, a uh, great film was uh, uh, adapted starring John Garfield and Lana Turner and later on Jack Nicholson also. Um, James Cain also contributed to Double Indemnity and where uh, Raymond Chandler also co-wrote the screenplay with Billy Wilder. And Cornell Woolrich who wrote The Bride Wore Black. The film was adapted into a film by uh, the French new wave master Francois Truffaut. With Hammett, Film noir spreads itself all over the family of crime films. Arguably, film noir begins to come into focus in 1941 with the adaptation of Hammett's novel, The Maltese uh, Falcon, directed by John Huston. And uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart here embodies Sam Spade and the type of a so called hard boiled detective hero. Raymond Chandler also wrote, uh, um, you know, in the simple art of murder and famously he writes, but down those mean streets a man must go who is not mean, who is neither tarnished nor afraid. So, that became a typical description of uh, uh, a prototype noir hero who goes down the mean streets and Martin Scorsese took the title of one of his earlier films from this mean streets. 
Chandler also gives us the seedy, corrupt, dark city and a wise cracking hero. So, those are the contributions of the pulp writers. It is worth considering that Chandler's screenplays such as uh, Double Indemnity, The Blue Dahlia and Strangers on a Train are much more central to the notion of film noir than the films based on his novels. So, noir is uh, however, more a uh, style than a genre. Some of the stylistic features include interplay of shadow and light as we call it chiaroscuro, stylized narratives, sometimes use of a voice over narration, exploring the psychology of the male protagonist, presence of a farm fatal and a general attitude uh, of pessimism, depression and anxiety. Film noir thus can broadly be de de defined by a subject, a locale and a character. Its subject is crime, almost always a murder, but sometimes a theft also. Its locale is the contemporary world, usually a city at night. The character is a fallible or a tarnished man and sometimes a woman. From this situation, an investigation almost always ensues, which further involves the protagonist as it unravels the web of misadventures. And whether it leads to punishment and doom or redemption is not as important to the genre as there being an investigation. So, the process is most more important, the journey is more important than the conclusion. Such then are the common uh, components that constitute the genre, a crime, a uh, uh, flawed protagonist, a farm fatal, a contemporary setting and an investigation. Um, it is all one of the characteristics of Jean uh, of film Noah is also the haunted past of the protagonist, where no Noah protagonists are always escaping some past burden or a traumatic incident. Noah protagonists are often individuals who are haunted by the past and carry the burden of the past. For example, in uh, Robert uh, uh, Sodmark's classic uh, movie, the the Killers which is based on the short story by Ernest Hemingway. The main character Sweetie uh, as played by Burt Lancaster waits resignedly for his end at the hands of two killers, knowing that his past has finally caught up with him. In The Fallen Sparrow, John Garfield delivers a poignant performance as a Spanish Civil War veteran who cannot escape the memory of his period of um, incarceration and torture at the hands of Franco's agents. And then uh, in Raymond Chandler's screenplay for the movie The Blue Dahlia, it sees uh, dedicated friends and decorated war veteran uh, uh, Buzz as played by William Bendix experiencing blackouts and uh, fits of murderous rage that make him the chief murder suspect. Even his tenderness towards his buddies cannot hide the violence, which is ready to erupt any moment. In Fritz Lang's The Big Heat, detective Dave Banyan as played by Glenn Ford, he goes on a personal vendetta against our gang of mobsters led by the great Lee Marvin after the death of his wife in a car bombing. Like all traditional Noah endings, even though the hero returns to the arms of the legitimate police force at the end of the movie. This is no way or in no way mitigates the violence he commits as well as uh, instigates against those he believes guilty. Robert Aldrich's uh, Kiss Me Deadly, which, is, uh, which was made in 1954, is based on Mickey Spillen's pulp thriller and is an apocalyptic tale of paranoia, revenge and betrayal. The film's sensational tagline was blood red kisses, white hot thrills. Okay. So, these are some of the great film noir and all are results of uh, German expressionism. Another feature of film noir is hideout, which where the protagonists seek concealment in dimly lit rooms and dark alleys. The bottom line remains one cannot escape one's past no matter how much one tries. Life is a fatalistic nightmare there is no escape or exit and the past always catches up with you. Film experts mention the four archetype characters of Noah as the truth seeker, the detective, officer of the law, hard boiled detective that is, the hunted and outsider could be the hero, corrupt cop and the farm fatal, 
seductive, mysterious, powerful, always in control and literally it means the killer woman. Um, a great filmmaker of uh, this uh, style was Jacques Tournier and Jacques Tournier arrived in Hollywood in 1914 from Paris. He began his directing career in the French film industry in 1931 and then returned to Hollywood in 1935 on his own and worked as a second unit director um, at MGM uh, film studio. He uh, started making films from 1939 onwards. Later on, he left MGM to join RKO studio where he directed horror classics such as I Walk with a Zombie and Cat People which established his credentials as an experimental director of low budget films. So, um, these are some of the great films and great filmmakers of the uh, film noir period and I would like to uh, draw your attention to the bibliography. So, we have Lot H. Eisner's The Haunted Screen, Expressionism in the German Cinema and the Influence of Max Reinhardt, Siegfried Krakor and Leonardo Chiarezima from Caligari to Hitler as Psychological History of the German Film and Ian Roberts, German Expressionist Cinema, The World of Light and Shadow. So, thank you very much. We will be meeting soon and discuss our other great cinematic moments.